is I was going to talk about where claims come from and correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Now, I try to get students in the habit of writing, beginning their sentences with for the claimant's knowledge of the facts, just to get in that habit. Because when you start a sentence like that, a correct sentence structure in that manner, you're taking jurisdiction over that sentence. Keep in mind, I'm speaking in plain English, using plain English terms. I'm aware of what I'm saying. I'm trying to use a common language so that other people can cognize correct sentence structure and the psychology and things like that behind it. So each correct sentence structure begins with a cause. The positional that functions in that capacity is for, F-O-R. So if you start a claim with for the claimant's knowledge, you being the claimant, because one may only make a claim for themselves, you are the cause. Your knowledge is the cause of the claim. And then at the end, you would put by the claimant, which would be you. You take authority over it. You're the cause and the authority. And once people get in that habit, then they can begin to see where the knowledge comes from. So where the knowledge comes from, where, where does knowledge come from? I mean, you could say, yeah, you study and evidence and blah, blah, blah. But really, when you get down to the bottom of it, knowledge comes from your senses. It's the only way you can interact with whatever is outside of you, your senses. If, for example, if you weren't hearing me, if you weren't seeing me, I wouldn't exist to you and vice versa. So this is where claimant's knowledge comes from. It comes from, speaking for myself, I navigate through the sea of space with my senses, my port of sensation of which I am the port authority. And yes, I do have a correct sentence structure claim with flag mechanics and postal mechanics that designates me as a port authority of this port this port of sensation and data comes in to that port of sensation. And then I permit or consent to certain data coming to my dock and it docks and then I bring it onto the deck and then I formulate, I take the knowledge and formulate claims and then transship the claims out as knowledge. So I just told you basically for the claimant's cognition, of the sensation is with the correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, claim of the facts with the knowledge by the claimant, period. My knowledge comes from my senses, what I sense. It can't really come from anywhere else except for one's senses. So that's why I highly recommend people get in the habit of starting their correct sentence structure, at least at the beginning, with for the claimless knowledge of the facts, because now you've established a strong cause and a concern. Now you can put your verb of the thinking in and then go on to your possessive concern, possessive authority, whatever you're going to do after it, as long as you end on an authority. And as long as you follow the verb of the possessive and you precede the authority with a possessive, and then there's a concern sandwiched in there between the possessives. In other words, for, of, is, or are, with, of, with, by. You can put as many withs and ofs in there as you want after the verb, as long as you follow that sequence. So that's how one, that's where the source of the claimant's knowledge comes from. And what is authority? Authority is knowledge and the skill to convey that knowledge, which comes from the cognition of one's sensations. This is why, and this is an opinion on my part, this is why the fiction teaches that sensation is somehow an opinion. This is why I feel that the word sense and sensation are not in any Black's Law dictionary because sensing and sensation is firsthand knowledge of one's own senses. And you, there's no argument with that. If this, for example, just please imagine that this is 
well, what is it? It's kombucha. If I dump it on my arm and I say, oh, that's cold. I got my shirt wet. I have a sensation of my shirt being wet and the liquid is cold. And then you come and say, no, 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 it's not cold. No, your shirt it's not wet. You see how ridiculous that is? I'm telling you what I'm sensing. You cannot argue sensation. And that's why I feel like some people try to put the kibosh on it. They try to say that it's a no contract word and, and sensation is opinion. No, it's not opinion. Because where would you be without your senses? Try navigating down the road without using any of your senses. Try it. <laughs> I'm just speaking from logic. I'm a logician. And I really I try to adhere to that as best I can. And that's what I, how I teach the grammar and how I've been able to come to the system that I use to teach the grammar in my confidential workshops. It's very meticulous and it's based upon the kuleana that I get from my student on the other end of the camera there, on the other end of the computer. So now that we've established how a claim is started, and the, some of the mechanics in creating a correct sentence structure claim grammatically. Now we can move on to what does it mean when you syntax something? So usually, and actually for me, this is how I do it. If someone's trespassing, trying to trespass, if someone is trying to force me to do something I don't want to do bureaucratically, whether it's extort value from me in some manner, get, you know, force me to do something or a loved one or a client or whatever. Correct sentence structure is an awesome way to stop that trespass. And you do it by pointing out the fiction syntax used in the document. So in other words, if you have a document, uh, I don't know, whatever this is. Say this document comes and, and you see all this crap on it and it wants, okay, it says $15 off in this box. Let's say that it's $1,500 that this individual wants from me saying that I owe it. And they're gonna keep sending stuff and they're gonna threaten to take me to court and whatever. So I would syntax this. Why would I syntax it? Because it is a derelict vessel. There's no closure on the grammar on this vessel. And it could cause a damage to someone. Me, perhaps. Maybe someone else. I don't know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to commandeer the vessel. I'm going to put a stamp on it. I'm going to put a flag on it. And I'm going to put a syntax key on it. And I'm going to syntax and show the grammar, the fictitious conveyance of grammar contained on this vessel. And then I'm going to write a correct sentence structure claim using 12B7 through 12B1 and create a correct sentence structure claim. Uh, what form that would take, it would just depend upon what's on here. And then I'm going to send it back to whoever sent that to me, pointing out and giving closure on the fictitious of conveyance of grammar or the grammatical mistakes or however hardcore I want to go with it. And then the ball would then be in their court. Now, there are other mechanics that go behind it, like uh, timelines, drogue timelines, and things like that. Uh, but that's neither here nor there with grammar mechanics. So let's just say I send it back and point out their mistakes. What's the next thing that's going to happen? Either they're not going to ever respond to me again, which has happened multiple times, or they'll try a different tact. They'll keep sending the same thing over and over, in which case I keep sending the same thing over and over. But... It usually doesn't going on, go on very long. It usually, at the most, two, three times. And then I never hear from them again. 
one time when I was doing work for a client, it took me, I think, five letters uh, in order for the interloper to stop harassing uh, my client. And what actually happened is the interloper that was harassing my client literally vanished. Like they physically vacated their business address with no forwarding address. The building was vacant, which was pretty amazing. And actually the postmaster that I spoke with who returned the registered mail to me for the fifth letter certified this and said they no longer exist they're no longer here so again when i do these things i don't do them in a mean spirit i don't yell at people uh cajole people it's peaceful and neutral and it's always in an educational capacity because i find personally i find it distasteful and repulsive to use fiction tactics um as a first course of action. Meaning I'm not big at, at yelling or cussing or using physical intimidation or any of that stuff. Because that's all the stuff the fiction does. The fiction has done that to us uh, throughout history. Used force, fear, intimidation, and bullying. And I see that a lot in other constructs with quantum grammar. And that's why I've distanced myself from them. Because I feel like we've done that cycle of threats of violence and authoritarianism for hundreds, if not thousands, or who knows, millions of years. That that cycle, that perpetual cycle of war and whatever else and fighting, that I don't really want to, I don't want to be a part of that. You know, that's fine for the people that like it. I don't like it. I mean, I'm a big fan of mixed martial arts. Anybody who listens to the videos or knows me knows that I am. And I, I used to do things like that, like boxing, jujitsu, Muay Thai, a little bit of wrestling. I used to love things like that for many, many years. I trained in gyms and things like that. But as a general rule, that is not my go-to. That's something I have in my back pocket, like correct sentence structure. Like it's good to have uh, a varied and useful tool belt, not useless but useful, have these tools on your tool belt sharpened and ready to go so they're there when you need them. So, so again, that's what it means to syntax something. You're commandeering the vessel. You're showing the modification in the grammar, modification via adverbs and adjectives. Now here's the other thing, and this is the rule one rule equal. If you're gonna syntax someone's document, and you're gonna show them why their grammar is not correct, then you yourself better have closure on what correct is and what correct grammar is. You have to do a correct grammar performance before you can tell someone else what they're doing wrong. On a personal note, this is what happened to me in 2019, I think it was. Uh, I had some individuals who I, whom I was teaching, and they were also involved with other various color thumb clubs. And the individuals in the thumb clubs would say, how do, how do you know what you know? And then they would say, oh, well, Jason. And then they would say, well, Jason's not correct. He's wrong. And then the student would say, well, what's he wrong about? Show me where he's not correct. And then the, the thumb club would come back and say, well, he doesn't have authorization from Russell. Oh, okay. So now they've clearly shown that they don't know what authority is because authority comes from knowledge. And if you watch those old colon David Eiffel, Wynn colon Miller videos and colon Russell Hyphen J colon Gold videos, they say the same thing. Authority comes from knowledge. Well, who gave them the authority to go into courtrooms and do the things that they claimed? Who gave them the authority to be judges? Knowledge. They didn't need anyone's permission. They just did it. Like people are fond of saying, you know, certain people are fond of saying, oh, it takes 15 years to study to be a federal postal judge. Really? 
Do you remember that video with Gordon and Russell where Russell says that some 16-year-old kid was a federal postal judge in court? That kid must have been studying when he was like 365 days old, studying from the time he was in diapers, <laughs> right? That doesn't matter. I mean, on a safety level where if someone's teaching things, yes, a tutor is only going to give the student what they're ready for. But to say that's the be all end all of uh, how a scenario would be is is ludicrous. Some people learn faster than other people. It took me a thousand hours before I was able to use this grammar in any effective manner. A thousand hours. Now I know that the common hour count is 200. You have to 200 hours of study to be able to understand this. I call bullshit on that. I'll just say flat out. I mean, maybe for a rare exception, but not for this guy. It took me a thousand hours before I was even able to do it. And I didn't even understand the syntax at that point fully. So it takes a lot of time and effort. A lot of people just aren't willing to put that time and effort in. They just want handouts. They want stuff given to them for free, which, by the way, I want to bring this up. And I've mentioned this before. I'm going to mention it again. I feel like, and this is my own position, live life claims should be available to everyone. Everyone should have the opportunity to get a live life claim. Charging a value for a live life claim is not correct. I don't feel it is. I know there are people out there that do it. And this started in 2018, actually after David passed away. I don't agree with that. I would suggest and highly recommend that those individuals that want to create their own live life claims and take autonomy and authority over themselves, study this YouTube channel, this one right here, which about 300 grammar videos on here. Get yourself a base of correct sentence structure knowledge, which by the way, I have many students in this past year who have come to me and I've tested them. And just from studying this YouTube channel, they've gotten 75 to 80% closure on the grammar just from this YouTube channel. So it is possible. Everything I teach in the workshops is available for free to the public on this YouTube channel. Study it and then, and then create your own live life claim. I would highly recommend it. Of course, you can go and pay for it and get your authority from someone else. And then you're consenting to someone else's authority and coming in under their umbrella or their construct, and they're an authority over you. In other words, sure, you can be free, but first you have to kiss the ring. Bow down. I'm not a fan of that at all. I don't do that. I try to teach autonomy where for my students, um, once they reach that closure, they're in their own vessel, and I happily push them out to sea and, uh, you know, give them a way to communicate so they hopefully never have to look behind them and say, Jason, what do I do here? They already have the knowledge. They're autonomous. They don't need me anymore. I don't try to create a dependency on these students so that they keep coming back. I try to give as much as I can to my judgment of their capacity to learn it and store the knowledge so that they have the knowledge and they can just go do their own thing. And of course, my email address is a lifeline that's always open. If you, you know, run into problems, more than happy to help you if I can. So, so I've gone over the mechanics of where claims come from, claims knowledge comes from sensation, port of sensation. I've, co I've covered uh, syntax, how that works, and um, how one would use it. Another note on that I'd like to say is correct sentence structure, communication, partially syntax grammar is awesome for stopping a trespass. In the years that I've been doing it, I have never, ever seen anyone force someone to do something they didn't want to do using correct sentence structure. In other words, I've never seen someone sue another person in correct sentence structure for 10 troy ounces of gold and get the gold. I've never seen it. I've never seen someone uh, pay someone something 
using correct sentence structure. The only thing I've ever witnessed it do, and this is from firsthand knowledge, is stop a trespass, a malicious trespass, or nasty and trespass. Either or, it doesn't matter which. I have never seen it be able to force someone to do something they didn't want to do. It's very powerful in stopping trespass. As far as forcing someone else to do something against their will, not so much. And I attribute that to the peace and neutrality of the correctness with the grammar. You're more than welcome to study the grammar here on this channel, over 300 videos. Or you can contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. And um, I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation and we'll see if correct grammar workshops are something you want to do in order to fast track your way to the knowledge. Um, other than that, just about any grammar question you have can be answered by taking the time to study the videos on this channel. I took the time. I invested thousands of hours to create these videos. It would be contingent upon you to invest whatever time you feel is worthy to studying the videos. What are your thoughts on the space after the colon? Which colon would that be, David? I'm pretty sure we did a workshop or two together, and I'm pretty sure I pointed out to you my closure on the colon. Uh, what is this individual down here? VOR.ONG. No idea what that is. You know what I'm going to do, David, is I'm going to go and find that video and I'm going to post it, especially for you, so that you can get closure on the on the colon. Because I know you've been at this for a while. And uh, what it sounds like, and this is just a guess on my part, man. It sounds like you've been looking at perhaps different uh tutors of correct sentence structure or different information about it what you will find on my channel is a consistency hopefully the whole way through there's no contradictions in what i do just the other day a student pointed out uh, a mistake on my channel and i immediately took the video down because i don't want any i, I don't want any uh, misinformation out there about the grammar and mistakes everybody makes mistakes <laughs> I'm definitely not immune to making mistakes. So I definitely own up to it and get rid of it so that it doesn't uh, lead anybody the wrong way. Okay, study of the full colon is what it's called. And I'm going to share the link. I can freestyle rap in quantum grammar. Well, if you can, if you can freestyle rap in quantum grammar, then you can type it out right here, right now. So let's see it. Let's see some of your freestyle rap, but type it out. David, there's the link to the video. Uh, more than welcome to study that video. That video, let me see when I publish that video. I published that video on February 3rd, 2019. So that video, closure, my closure on the colon mechanics, has been on my channel for three years. Three years that video has been on my channel. And I still get people asking about the colon. So again, I invite you to take the time in the now space to study these videos that I've invested thousands of hours in creating. Take the time to study them. Watch each playlist the whole way through. That's why I created it. David and Russell came out with basically the rudiments of how to do something. I found that there was a, a big gaping hole about the why. And so that's the, the hole I've tried to fill. The void I've tried to fill is to put the why into why things are the way they are or why they function the way they do. For this heart rock of this beatbox is with this hip hop without da flip flop by this MC. 
Can you read that backwards for me? What is this positional? What is what is congruent positional with W I T O U T? And what is da D A? And flip flop, I assume. You don't want to assume. I'm guessing that flip flop is supposed to be a compound fact, but it's not. Well, in correct sentence structure, we don't use slang. The way I teach the group, very your technology, and I know some people think that it can be casual or lazy. I've actually had members of that certain color club. Uh, what they'll do is they'll put a colon and then they'll hyphenate a fiction babble sentence like colon, how hyphen are hyphen you hyphen doing hyphen today, question mark. That's not correct sentence structure. I don't know what the hell that is. So that's why I say I've never seen anyone use it. And, I, and you just proved it to me that it'd be very difficult to use. So um, I'd be interested in here to hear how your students how how successful they've been with using slang quantum grammar because i would never do such a thing to me the the grammar is pure and it's a technology and my volition is to be as correct as possible with the knowledge and have a consistent knowledge base to teach others with uh, so that that's the way i do it and it's been, you know, I've been doing this for about five years now, so it's worked for what I do. So you can always come out of the slang. Well, yeah, I mean, be a fun, uh, definitely a fun thing to do. I guess to listen to would be different because obviously verbalizations are different than writing. Oh. Oh, snagged my shirt. So yeah, that's an interesting thing. Um, I don't participate with any of those types of things. No lazy, no casual, no slang. It's all correct sentence structure across the board, correct uh, to the best of my knowledge and the best of my certification. So I don't want to uh, open myself up to any weaknesses with the fiction. But I understand how someone would perhaps take it and use it in a musical setting. Uh, it's a different form of communication. Yes, um, uh, Desert King for you. Some of my best students... Uh, English is not their first language, is not their native language. So that can be a blessing. For me, I was an English major in college, so I had to unlearn all that stuff in order to learn this. All right, again, I'm going to take this video and probably edit out some superfluous uh, sections and just keep the grammar in there so that uh, beginners can come on. Because this is basically a video for beginners. I'm going to be coming out with a video shortly about authoritarianism, which is different than authority or authorization authoritarianism, which is basically the system we've been brought up in. Authoritarianism is basically a synonym for bullying, and I want no part of that. So I'm doing a, a video on that. S-R-A-N-Y-A-N-A. -A. Would you mind sharing your correct name? I appreciate your kind words as well. I'm glad that you think I'm doing a a good job. Please share your correct name so we know who you are. 
to maintain the rule one rule equal. You know my correct name. I just ask that you show us the same considerations. I like to level the geometric playing field whenever I can. Colon Jeremiah, Jeremiah space hyphen gene. Uh, Jeremiah, I would highly recommend if you're going to hyphenate that name to put the hyphen tight up against the H and then put a period at the end of the gene. If that is your name, it would be colon Jeremiah hyphen gene period. And then it would be a compound fact. As it stands, uh, it's a adjective pronoun. Okay, cool. Well, here's the thing. With the live life claim, again, whatever you want your name to be, that is your name. It doesn't matter if, if, if I use colon Jason hyphen Matthew colon space glass period, or if I just use Jason hyphen Matthew, or if I choose to use J, uh, colon Jason colon space glass, it doesn't matter. The name is the name, and it's whatever I authorize it to be. You don't need a family name if you don't want a family name. You don't need a first name. You can go by something else. You know, I've seen people uh, do under live life claims where they say that their name is, for example, colon Joe colon crown, C-R-O-W-N, period, because it has to do with something they're studying. You know, you could make your, your name uh, colon health aid colon space kombucha. <laughs> your name is your name, and it has nothing to do with your birth certificate. The fiction birth certificate. Mine doesn't. I have no contract with that name. But for the ease of the communication, that's the name that people know me by. So why would I do something different with it, it's not a big deal to me. It was a mistype, bro, duh. What's duh? Who's that directed toward? When one takes authority over their document, um, it is what it is, especially if you have closure on the grammar. And you can certify mathematically your sentences forwards and backwards. Okay, I'm going to wrap this up. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate everyone's input and participation. And um, what about the birth date? What about it? I don't know about what... Uh, Specifically, you're asking about a birth date. I don't have any memory of when I was born. So I could give two shits about uh, a birth date. On my live life claim, I claim this vessel from point of conception. From the point of the life spark, the spark of the life. That's when I claim. The birth date doesn't really make much difference to me. Um, I think I do have the fiction birth date on there to acknowledge that condition of state. But I claim this life, stewardship of this life from point of conception, from point of creation. For the salvage of the colon. Oh, there's no salvaging a colon. A colon is a colon. Um, you either use it with correctness or you don't. You can either give closure to what it means or you don't. And if you don't follow the cause, concern, verb, possessive, concern, possessive authority, your colon, if you don't follow that with the spacing in your colons, it's going to be not correct and it's going to be adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun. So that's why I shared that video with you, David, so you can have closure on it if you choose. Um, and if you look at it, you'll see what I mean. You can certify your sentence forwards and backwards with the way I use the colons. That's the, why I created it that way three years ago.
thank you very much. And uh, I'll put this back up in a slightly edited form to take out the uh, not so important stuff and keep the grammar in. Thank you. Goodness, could it be possible that there is more than what we can see out our eyes? Well, of course there is. There's more because you can hear out your ears. You can touch things with your skin. You can feel things with your emotions. So, of course, there's more than you can see. I mean, that's just logic. Can one have pudding if they don't eat their meat? Leave them kids alone.